All right, welcome back, chemistry students. Let's look at, so in our series of reactions, let's look at reaction number six. It says using a barrel type pipette, add two milliliters, which is 40 drops of um, copper two chloride. And then we're gonna add 25 drops of 0.5 molar sodium phosphate and just make observations what happens, all right? Um, so my, I'm gonna do my copper two chloride first. Okay, the pipette fell in there, so just a moment. All right, we're gonna do a little pipette extraction here. Um, so I have my pipette of um, copper two chloride, and it says 40 drops. So I'm gonna put that in my test tube. There we go. <laughs> I feel like that's perfect. And then I have kind of a damaged, I don't remember why I cut the tip of this one off, but I think I'll get a clean one here really, really quickly. Okay, and I don't have this labeled because I just mixed it up for you all. Um, 0.5 molar sodium phosphate. And it says to add 25 drops. I hope this will be exciting. Hmm. So we have this beautiful blue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Do you see a change? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, Oh, I counted way too many. It said 25. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but look at this. I shake. It's like, can you see? It's like a gel. So it's this beautiful blue. Um, and it, and the, it doesn't look the right color on there. It's like an aqua blue, a little green, like, a little a hint of green in it, but but definitely a precipitate or solid has formed. So think about the types of reaction we talked about where where that might happen. I'm gonna feel it. It doesn't seem to be any temperature change that might be important. So let's write that down. Um, but the biggest thing is we get this super cool, you know, real thick gel um, precipitate. So it's now a solid. All right, reaction number seven, here we go. We're gonna keep zipping along. Um, reaction number seven says, I'm reading it right from your sheet, um, using a barrel type pipette, whenever they say barrel type pipette, they're talking about one of these little guys, um, and add 20 drops of one molar sodium hydroxide. So I have that right here. Um, I'm gonna grab a clean test tube. I have brand new ones I would totally let you guys use if you were here. All right, so clean um, borosilicate glass test tube, 20 drops of sodium hydroxide. So I have one molar sodium hydroxide, 20 drops of that. It's a clear solution, which doesn't make it extra cool. It just is, that's my observation. Super fast. So not, it's not that exciting to watch me count my drops. So, um, so that's my 20 drops of sodium hydroxide. Oh, I think I might have put 40 in there. Um, I just want to keep, I just want to keep um, my quantities the same for both. I think is is. Um, I'm gonna dump that out. I mean because we're actually counting numbers of drops. That's more like 20. 
All right, then it says to add a drop of phenyl phthalene indicator. Grab another clean test tube. Or clean barrel type pipette. So it says add a drop of phenyl phthalene. Just a couple drops. Oh, did you see what happened even when I, I didn't even get it in there? Just on the edge. See that beautiful pink? So what we had in here was um, sodium hydroxide, which is the base. So the important observation is what did you see happen when you added phenolphthalein to the base? We saw that this beautiful bright pink color. All right, then it says using a clean barrel type pipette, add one um, molar hydrochloric acid solution, one drop at a time, one drop at a time. Gosh, I grabbed two clean ones. Oh, I did use them both. Maybe. So, I just hate it when I walk off screen and come back. We have lots of time. <laughs> We're on reaction number seven. Okay, so what it's telling me to do is one drop at a time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I know it's going to take at least that many. 19, 11, 12. <sighs> I see something happening. And I want to, when it gets close, because this is a really small amount, when it gets really close, I, I probably should have slowed down. It doesn't matter too much for this reaction, but if you were doing a real specific reaction, so this took about 20 drops. So I had 20 drops of sodium hydroxide in here, and then it, of one molar strength, and then it took about 20 drops of one molar strength hydrochloric acid to make this not be basic or alkaline anymore. Now it's pretty clear. It looks a little more cloudy on, on the video than it really is. It's really pretty clear. Um, so that was reaction number seven, um, was just the number of drops, and that was about, um, and that was uh, about 20 drops. Okay, so I noticed, looking back, I don't think in reaction number two that I completed all of the steps. So I'm actually going to redo that one for you. We still have reaction number eight, so we'll do that one too. Um, but in reaction number two, it was putting that, um, taking hydrochloric acid. And so I took hydrochloric acid and put in a test tube. And then it said put magnesium in there. And I think I forgot to put the lighted wood splint in there to see what happens, because this is actually a cool one. The other two were both, yep, it went out, and that's not very exciting, but this one is a little cooler. I think I was so excited about reaction number one where we got to burn magnesium that I just totally forgot um, in the second part of number two that there's another cool part. So we already did reaction number two. I'm just going to do it again. So this is my hydrochloric acid, and I dropped my magnesium in, and we said, oh, yeah, it produces, it gets super fizzy, and it produces heat. Well, and I'm getting, I got a lot going on here. And then it's the other, the last part it said to do, and I don't think I did it. I'm pretty sure I didn't, so I want to do it now. Did you hear that? Oh, shoot. I have to wait a little bit till it's done. You heard it a little bit at first. You heard that little bit of noise. See that? There's something kind of cool happening with that. So it's not, it's definitely not. Um... Okay, I need to run that under the water.
So listen carefully. <gasps> Did you hear that? <laughs> There's only one gas that tends to react that way. I didn't get that down. There has to be the right mixture of oxygen. I don't have enough of the gas in there because my reaction is slowing down. But did you hear that popping sound? Ah, I can't get it to go again. I think I'm much, yeah, I'm much safer when you are here because, um, I'm working on my desk here, which you know is not, not always the greatest. But did you hear that popping sound? I think my reaction is maybe all, like maybe all the um, hydrochloric acid has been neutralized. That popping sound is very indicative of hydrogen being present. Okay? So if you think of um, the Hindenburg <laughs> and how explosive that was, Remember that was filled with hydrogen? Hydrogen's very light, just like helium, and it's a little easier to come by than helium. That's why they used it in the Hindenburg. The super duper downside of hydrogen is it's super flammable. So what we're getting in the mouth of this test tube with the lit splint, and it only happens at the mouth of the test tube because we need enough oxygen going in to support combustion to mix with that, the hydrogen gas that's produced to produce just this little tiny explosion in the mouth of the test tube with just sounds like that popping noise. Um, so again, a super important observation that I missed. I don't remember if I put the lit splint in, but maybe it wasn't enough um, reaction at the time, or if I just forgot to do it, I'd have to look back and see. But either way, that's what we should see for reaction number two. It's very important, okay? Because now you know one of the products in that reaction, right? And then the second part of that, too, is um, when the hydrogen and oxygen combine, they, they just produce water. But the initial reaction that we were looking for at was the in the hydrochloric acid with the magnesium, we obviously have the production of oxygen gas. Okay. For the very last lab, we're going to use something called, and I don't want to have this anywhere near me, um, you're going to use a little ethyl alcohol. It's super flammable. I'm, I'm just putting, like it says 40 drops, I've kind of already pre-measured some of that, in a, an evaporating dish. And then I'm using really um, cold water, so I have ice water. And it says to fill a test tube about two-thirds full. This has to be really cold, otherwise it won't work. Then I'm going to light the alcohol. It's super flammable. Like, we don't want it to spill at all. It burns at such a clean flame. I don't even know if you can. I, I guess you can see that a little bit. All right. So I'm holding my very cold test tube kind of over this. And here's, and I don't know if you can see, immediately we see condensation just very briefly forming on the outside of that test tube. So, um, so we see that condensation forming. That's actually tells me, and I think it's done burning already, which is good. And that's all, that's all we see for a reaction. So not super exciting, however, very telling. Because there's condensation, a byproduct of that combustion of the alcohol was water vapor. And that's really important. So the observation is that we see this condensate. Again, this has to be very cold. Um, so we know that one of the products of that particular reaction is just water vapor. Um, and that's really all we see with this. And that's the last one. So. Hopefully you got all your observations and hopefully they help you determine some of the products um, to work through predicting those products. I will give you some hints on some of those, but I want you to try to work through some of them on your own as well. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions.